Hey friends, welcome to my channel and uh, this video is going to be very important because uh, you know uh, in the CSI NET exam or any competitive exam there are uh, one or two questions are always there from the cyclohexane ring system that is the derivative of the cyclohexane rings uh, <coughs> they give you <coughs> different confirmations and you have to predict which is more stable now <coughs> applying your uh, <coughs> basic concept uh, you can tell uh, sometimes that which is more stable but always to predict the more stable confirmation sitting in the exam hall it is a very difficult uh, task so uh, in some cases if you don't know which is more stable you cannot uh, predict it in the exam hall so in this video i am going to discuss about some of the representative examples which i have collected uh, or from different books and uh, previous year question papers and this will give you an idea and uh, you can uh, get common from this also in the question so uh, this video is going to be very important and so let's start to this topic so this is the first example uh, which i took so uh, which uh, what will be the more stable conformation of this particular isomer now you can see that uh, there is a nitrogen atom or they can give you a oxygen atom in this place so uh, they can give you this example also they are uh, these two are similar type of example and they will prefer a particular uh, conformation which is uh, uh, not usually uh, expected from a cyclohexane ring system so you can see if uh, it uh, if these isomers uh, remain in the both form instead of this chair form so basically what i'm trying to say is that if they remain in this both form then you can see there is a possibility that this oxygen this oh bond this hydrogen of this oh group and this nitrogen they can form a hydrogen bonding similar is the case uh, here you can see so here is oxygen atom and you can see uh, they can form this uh, stable hydrogen bonding so this hydrogen bonding stabilizes this boat form over this chair form so all the chair form is more flexible but in the boat form due to the presence of this hydrogen bonding uh, this uh, molecule will prefer to uh, stay in this uh, boat form so if you don't know this example you cannot predict in uh, predict it in the exam hall okay so the next example which i am going to discuss is that uh, so let's say you have given this example where you have two carbonyl groups uh, at the one and four position of the cyclohexane ring now uh, you know that whenever you have a cyclohexanone type system uh, this bond angle will always try to open okay because this is not sp3 hybridized this is sp2 hybridized and that's uh, that's why they will not prefer the chair form and uh, although when you have only one carbonyl group it is uh, still in the chair form but when you put two uh, carbonyl group uh, the ring strain will force the chair compound to go to the twist port form so what um, uh, I, uh, confirmation you will get is actually the twist port form okay so this is the twist port form and your two carbonyl groups will be like color, this color, color, color. so in this case you can see although the uh, twist board form which is not generally preferred one for a cyclic and ring system but in this case the presence of these two carbonyl group will force uh, the molecule to adopt the twist board form some other molecules are also there which uh, prefer to exist in the twist board form for example when you have a uh, two tart butyl group like this uh, both um, that is trans two tart butyl groups are trans and they are at one four position so there is a chance that they can both be equatorial but uh, whenever one tart butyl group is uh, sorry when they are cis that is uh, if they are cis then you have to put one of them in the axial form okay now this tart butyl group they have massive uh, one three diaxial interactions with this hydrogen atom so they will not prefer this tart tar butyl group will not prefer to stay in the axial form and that's why they will orient themselves uh, this molecule will orient it in the uh, 
twist board form where they can place these two tributyl groups like this. So whenever you have this type of situation where you have two uh, tributyl group in the one four position and they are seized to each other, they will prefer to stay in the uh, twist board form. Similar is the case when you have a one three case. For example, you have one three case and uh, they are. Uh, in this case, they are trans to each other, okay? So, if they are cis to each other, then you can place both of them. Uh, so, if, if you have case where the uh, two tributyl groups are uh, one, three position and they are cis to each other, so then you can place both of them in the equatorial position. But if they are trans to each other, then one of them you have to place in the axial position and same one three diaxial interaction will be there. And that's why they will prefer to stay in the twist board form instead of the chair form. That is they can now place both of them in the shoot equatorial position like this. So that's why this type of molecule will uh, prefer to stay in the uh, twist board form. So this is another very good example where uh, 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 you have two conformations and one of the conformation your tardbutyl group is axial and one of the uh, another conformation the tardbutyl group is equatorial and the methyl group uh, is placed axial. Now uh, if you know a little bit about the cyclohexane ring system what are the conformation preferred conformation you know that always uh, it is told that the uh, the tardbutyl group should always be placed in the uh, in the equatorial form because it has a very bulky structure but uh, whenever you are considering a particular uh, molecule you should always look at the origin of the uh, destabilization why tardbutyl group should be placed uh, uh, equatorial instead of axial so the main reason for the destabilization of a group when it is placed in axial position is the 1 3 diaxial interaction now this is a uh, this is a system which is a uh, very different from other systems so here you can see when the tardbutyl group is placed in the axial position there is no such destabilization because there is no hydrogen atom which can interact in a 1 3 diaxial manner but uh, methyl group which is a very small group compared to tardbutyl group but when it is placed in the axial position you can see there is a stabilization between this hydrogen atom this uh, this 1 3 uh, diaxial interaction is uh, still there when uh, the group is very small that is methyl group but uh, this is a heterocyclic system and uh, due to the presence of this oxygen atom there is no such hydrogen atom and this destabilization is not there when the tardbutyl group is in axial position so that's why the although the tardbutyl group is bulky it will prefer to remain in the axial form so this is a very good example now the next example which uh, I will discuss is uh, this one. Uh, so uh, this is an example like this where you have two oxygen atoms here and you have uh, a wedge group here. Now this wedge group can either be axial or can be equatorial. So these two conformations are possible in this case. Uh, either this OH group should be uh, equatorial or they can be it can be axial okay now which one will be preferred uh, okay so in this case what happens is that if uh, although the OH group generally it is considered to be a group which uh, prefer to stay in the equatorial form but in this case it will be in the axial form because you can see uh, due to the presence of these oxygen atoms, there is a hydrogen bonding stabilization. So this hydrogen bonding stabilizes the molecule and that's why although the, uh, I mean, uh, the main case for which a group uh, stay in the uh, equatorial form instead of the axial form, form is the 1,3 diaxial interaction and in this case you can see there is no hydrogen atoms here. So 1,3 diaxial interaction is missing at the same time by placing the OH in the eco, uh, axial position this hydrogen bonding stabilization is possible and that's why the molecule will remain uh, the OH group in the axial form. Okay. Uh, now the next example which uh, I will discuss is uh, this one. Okay. So let's say you have uh, this type of situation and this uh, effect is uh, it has a very funny name. Okay, so let's say you have this situation where you have a hydrogen atom here. Now this hydrogen atom can either be axial or when you flip this one. So you can have another conformation like this. 
where your uh, nitrogen atom is here and hydrogen atom can be equatorial. So in this case, you can see hydrogen is equatorial. In this case, hydrogen is axial. Now, which one will be stable? So in this case, you can see one three diaxial interaction is still there because uh, there is a hydrogen. But when the hydrogen is equatorial, there is a no one three diaxial interaction. So you can uh, think that this uh, conformation will be stable. But there is a hidden effect. Okay, so. In this case, if you draw the lone pair on the nitrogen atom here, you can see there is a lone pair and the oxygen will also have a axial lone pair. So these two lone pair will repel each other. But in this case, you can see the oxygen lone pair is here and this lone pair is here. And the nitrogen lone pair is equatorial in this case. And there is no direct repulsion between these lone pairs. Okay. So there is no direct repulsion between these lone pairs. But in this case, a no, uh, rep uh, Coulombic repulsion exists. And you can see this uh, this uh, interaction is given a funny name because they resemble like the air of a rabbit, and this effect is called rabbit air effect. So this rabbit air effect will uh, make this conformation unstable. On the other hand, in this particular conformation, you can see there is a sigma star orbital. Okay, these two sigma star orbitals are there. One is CO sigma star and one is NC sigma star. And this lone pair can donate here. This is a N sigma star interaction, and same type of N sigma star interaction is uh, also there. So there is this conformation. Uh, at the same time, the rabbit air effect is abs absent here, and at the same time, there is a double anomeric effect. So both of these factor will uh, stabilize this molecule. So this will stay in this particular conformation. So this is a very good example of rabbit air effect. Okay, so the next example which I am going to discuss is uh, another uh, funny name it has and it is called hockey stick effect. So in this case, uh, the conformation is basically this one. Sorry, uh, you have uh, this type of a molecule where you have a sulfur atom here and you can have a halogen atom. Let's say it is a chlorine, bromine or any type of halogen. I generally represent it by X. Now it have uh, it, it can have this type of conformation or it can flip to give you a conformation like this. Now the sulfur will be here and this X will become now uh, equatorial. So these two are possible. One this X can be axial and one this uh, X can be equatorial. Then the original example there was the oxygen atom. So if uh, oxygen atom is there, you can uh, say that. Uh, this anomeric effect due to the anomeric effect here you can see this uh, C, uh, A, uh, cx sigma star is there and oxygen lone pair is there so this anomeric effect will stabilize this axial conformation over this equatorial one in this uh, in this case you can uh, you can say that the, due to the anomeric effect this axial conformation will be stable but what happens is that in this case the equatorial conformation is more stable now why is that okay <coughs> so basically what happens is that this sulfur has a lone pair of electron and this uh, X atom which can be an halogen. So that has also a lone pair of electron. Now you can see these lone pair of electrons are very much uh, at the proximate to one another in this case. But in this case you can see this sulfur lone pair is much uh, distant position from this um, halogen atom and that's why there is no direct Coulombic repulsion between this lone pair. And this type of interaction where you have one lone pair like this and another lone pair like this and the repulsion be uh, exists between there. This is called hockey stick effect. So this although the anomeric effect will stabilize this molecule, this hockey stick effect will destabilize this molecule. So this molecule has preference for this particular conformation over this. So this is a very uh, important example of hockey stick effect. Okay. And uh, another uh, example, uh, the last example which I will uh, discuss is uh, this one. Uh, let's say you have a molecule like this where you have two OH groups so, uh, at the 1 to position and they are trans to each, uh, each other. So you will think that they will uh, exist in the uh, conformation where the both of the OH group will be equatorial to one another. But there can be a conformation where the OH groups can be both axial. So basically the conformation will uh, look like this. Uh, so here you have one OH group and here you have one OH group. 
now you can see in the equatorial conformation obviously they they will be more stable in the equatorial conformation in this one two hydroxy case uh, this uh, conformation where the both the wedge groups are equatorial that is preferred over both uh, when both are axial but <coughs> let us take the case where you have two wedge group and uh, they are uh, at one three position so this can be one case where both are uh, axial and another case may be there where uh, uh, both are equatorial so this can be another conformation now which will be stable so if you consider only the steric point of view that is one three diaxial interaction you will expect that this will be more stable but you can see there can be a hydrogen bonding between these two OH group this uh, this OH high hydrogen and this oxygen there can be a hydrogen bonding and so <coughs> that's why this molecule will prefer to stay where both the wedge groups are at the axial position. So this is an unusual case where uh, you are placing both of your uh, groups in the um, axial position and still it is stable. So these are some uh, representative uh, examples uh, where uh, there is some unusual uh, preference uh, of uh, your uh, cycloaxial derivative uh, to one conformation over another and <coughs> the well known anomeric effect is always there. There are some very good examples of the anomeric effect. I will just uh, discuss one of them. That is, uh, it is a very um, common example. Uh, for example, you have a situation where, uh, the, uh, so what is basically anomeric effect is, so when you have a uh, X group that is a halogen group like this and you have a oxygen a heteroatom here, so this type of system will always uh, prefer to stay in the axial form than in the equatorial form, okay? So, this is stable over this. There are two factors uh, stabilizing this one. One is in this case, there is a Coulombic repulsion, and in this case, there is a N sigma star interaction. So, uh, I discussed more of the interesting examples on aromatic effect in the video of uh, uh, the named as uh, the negative hyperconjugation. So, you can watch that video. There are very good examples. I am not discussing that examples again. So, I will put the link in the description section. You can watch that video. And uh, hope this video will help you a lot for your uh, preparation of the CSI net exam. And if I uh, get more uh, interesting examples like this, I will definitely share with you. And if you like the video, then give thumbs up and uh, also subscribe my channel for getting more updates. Thank you for watching.